What mm. do you make of what's gone on? Whose mm. responsibility is it? Well, it's the British electorate, it's the public. It's, they're responsible, it's their day. Um, and uh, they've delivered a pretty stunning result. I mean, it's only the third time in my adult lifetime that there's been a change of government and it's a massive win for Labour. And, you know, all credit to Keir Starmer and Rachel Reeves who pulled it off. And particularly when you think we were all here like four, four and a half years ago with that massive defeat under Jeremy Corbyn, it's a huge achievement. Um, it's a terrible night for the Conservatives. It's actually the worst result since 1832, which uh, was when the modern democratic age began. Um, but as an odd feature of all of it, so I'm not taking anything away from the massive Labour win and how important it is for the country, but actually Labour didn't get that many votes to get that massive result. You know, the, the share of the vote is very low, given the result. And there's been a kind of kick the Tories out mood and it's really going to be up to Keir Starmer now, I think, over the next few weeks and months to kind of cement the win and explain to people how he can deliver the change that they want, which I don't think he was able to do in the campaign, but clearly people trust him to do it after the election and we're about to see if he can. We need to acknowledge uh, the success of reform, mm. not quite the success predicted by the exit poll, which suggested they may get 13 seats, yeah. but they are on four and Nigel Farage finally becomes mm. an MP. What will that do mm. to the Labour government? Uh, because he said, basically, we're coming for you. Yeah. And um, what does it mean for the... Conservatives, do they regroup with reform to make yeah. the opposition to Labour? You know, there were sort of two big moments, weren't there, of the night? One, you've just had one of them, Liz Truss losing, and, you know, uh, she and Kwasi Kwarteng, just sitting where I am, are, you know, are responsible for the Conservatives losing their reputation for economic competence, and Sunak was not able to be the change from that and not able to recover from that. The other standout moment of the night came much earlier in the middle of the night when Ed and I were doing some all-night commentary and that was uh, Nigel Farage winning. And it feels a bit like the fox has been let into the hen house. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he's finally got into the Palace of Westminster. Did he win? It's only a few numbers. You know, Parliament's not great for very small groups of MPs and individuals. It, it's, it's, it's often pretty unforgiving to people who are just in very small parties. But Farage's audience is out there in the country. He got around 15% yeah. of the vote. And in Parliament, you know, will he be able to do... It was the most chilling moment of the night, certainly if you kind of worry about, uh, as I do, that, you know, he wants to take the country in a direction most of us don't want. You know, when he said, I've basically killed off the Tories and now I'm going to kill off Labour. And I don't know whether that's possible... But I do think, you know, Labour have got to be careful. Again, I don't take... It, you know, I would have loved to add a majority of the Keir Starmer's got. But, you know, it feels a bit thin and it feels, you know, if they don't deliver, mm. if they don't address people's fears that they're being left behind in the world and living standards aren't going up and public services aren't... Mm. And if they can't deliver on that, and those are really hard things to deliver, just having a Labour Prime Minister isn't itself a solution. You know, then Farage will 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 prey on that. Uh, it's, it's so much of what you're saying, George, relates back to Brexit. Of course, mm. referendum brought in under your government, yeah, uh, and led to uh, you going. In fact, let's talk to a big Brexiteer, uh, former Conservative Minister uh, Steve Baker. Very good morning to you, Steve Baker. But it is uh, a sad morning for you because you've just lost your seat to the Labour Party. Why do you think that is? Well, first thing I would say is where I'm very sad is for our country, because I do think a Labour government will be a disaster, and I think that this moment of elation for them will not last very long. And, and I'm particularly sad for all those staffers who are going to lose their jobs, because, you know, I've already seen with my own staff, not for them, but their friends losing their jobs. It's devastating for them, and it's about a 1,000 redundancies, mostly young people, and young people who I would say are not going to be willing to work for reform. So I'm very sad for our country, uh, I'm very sad for those staff who are going to lose their jobs. Uh, and, of course, I fought this campaign to win. I wanted to win. I wanted to carry through my work. But um, for me, strictly personally, thank God at last I'm free. So the voters got it wrong in your constituency? 
George, I'm not having an argument with you. If they'd no, said to it. me that they would put us off blue on blue, I would have refused. That's Ed Balls. It was Ed Balls. I mean, was George, me. you know, you, uh, you and I have got Steve, a lot Steve, of history. Steve, Steve, it was Ed Balls, not George If only Ball. you'd fought a better... Oh, sorry about if that. If only you'd fought a better Remain campaign. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> Steve, 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 I have to just apologise to you and to mm. George Osborne. This was me, Ed Balls, asking you that question rather than George. Your desire oh, to lay Ed. into George Osborne was I... so overwhelming yeah. that we couldn't hold you back. It was me yeah. asking whether you're well, saying that the voters got Ed, it wrong. But by the sound I, of it, I think. By the sound of it, you think George I, Osborne got it wrong. I would. I think you got it wrong too. In the end, I got into politics over three matters. That your government rode an enormous credit boom where in, within which the money supply tripled, leading into the global financial crisis, a massively manufacturing injustice, a sense of injustice which has led to many of our subsequent troubles. I got into politics because of extraordinary rendition, our complicity in it, in torture, which you were party to. And I got into it because your party brought forward the Lisbon Treaty to avoid having a referendum on the Constitution for Europe. And if only you'd had a referendum on the Constitution for Europe or the Lisbon Treaty, we'd never have got here, Ed. So, you know, I'm happy to debate one. you any day, but I prefer... G goodness prefer me, Mr. Baker, I have to face. say, you know, it's 2024. Um, you've just lost your seat in your constituency. You've sort of thought of three different things, which <laughs> but were all happened over 17 years ago. Are you maybe in denial? Well... No, not at all. I mean, you know as well as I do that these big treaty changes with the European Union and indeed the monetary system post Bretton Woods is 50 years old, it's now breaking down. And I'm afraid you and George are as bad as each other on this particular score. Neither of you ever really understood monetary economics. And I've wasted a lot of breath in the House of Commons trying to explain to George in particular what was going on and the kind of injustice it was manufacturing. Well, much good did it do everybody. And now with the nation seething with a sense of injustice, economic injustice, of course they are. They can't afford house prices if they're young. Why? Because cheap credit was pumped into a housing market in which supply was constrained by planning laws about which neither of you did anything. So, you know, at last, as I say, I'm free, thank God. Go on, Mr Baker, tell us what you really think. Oh, I'm glad to, yeah. What I'm do you happy think? man. Okay, but uh... not for those staff. Not for but not, not for the 1,000 staff who've lost their jobs yeah. and not for the country, which is now going to have an absolutely miserable time under a Labour government, which, by the way, candidates have said that austerity, George's austerity, was a choice. Well, I always accepted it wasn't the choice. It was necessary. But what we're now going to find is poor Rachel Reeves, who seems to look more miserable every time I see her on TV, is going to have to do austerity. And she's going to have to do austerity with these Labour MPs who all told the public it was a choice. It's going to be... An absolute circus. Um, Steve Baker, you've blamed a lot of other people for your loss. Uh, do you blame Rishi Sunak? No, I, I, sorry, I wasn't, blaming, I wasn't blaming them for my loss. I mean, I, I've lost because of a range of factors. I mean, yeah. overall, I'm proud of my record. But, you know, if you ask me about George and Ed, I mean, they, do, they are the guilty men as far as I'm okay, concerned. Right. So you've blamed George and Ed, but do you... <laughs> To Next what to extent do you hold your party leader responsible? Oh, look, I'm not going to start criticising Rishi. I regard him with great, um, not only respect and admiration, but also affection. He's a good man with a good heart in the right place. He actually does understand the issues which I've just been discussing. Um, and it's a great pity that we weren't able to articulate what needs to be done in a way that can command the respect of the public and move forward. Now, I've said time and time again, if the Conservative Party does not stand for freedom, it stands for nothing. And I'm afraid for too long we've tried to be the heirs to Blair. Thanks, George. And the being the heirs to Blair hasn't worked, and that's why we're where we are. Baker, well, Rishi Sunak you know, is the I person wish... who led you into this election and has suffered this historic he defeat. Knows... Surely you hold... Yeah. I mean, apart from anybody yeah, else he... who's in this studio who is now no longer in government, you surely should hold your own leader responsible for what's happened, this catastrophe for your party overnight. I'm not going to criticise Rishi. He's done his level best of that, I'm absolutely sure, in difficult circumstances. But, you know, if only people had been, had higher principles and more steadfast commitment to the ideas of a free society, like, for example, having a democratic vote um, on uh, constitutional treaties, just to pick one example. And if only people... You know, it's an unrelated matter, but, you know, I, I really take seriously that the previous Labour government was allowed our security and intelligence services to be complicit in an extraordinary rendition. That is torture. I mean, that was an absolute disgrace. 
And, and I don't trust Labour not to do something similar again. It's a very sad day. And just to check, Mr uh, Bacon, because you don't want to, to criticise Rishi Sunak, how about his predecessor, who's just lost her seat in, uh, in, in, in Norfolk, Liz Truss? Um, does she bear any responsibility for your defeat? Look, I think all of us bear responsibility over a very long period, perhaps 100 years at least, back to the 1911 National Insurance Act. As Conservatives, we always seek to conserve, and unfortunately sometimes you need to come to power and overthrow what's been done by the Labour Party, because you know it's never going to work. And, and I'm afraid, time and time again, the Conservative Party, in pursuit of power, in pursuit of power, just accepts the institutions that they're handed. And it's proven a disaster. That's what the problem is. It's not about the voters of Wickham. The poor voters of Wickham are putting up with institutions which don't work. This is, of course, why I launched Conservative Way Forward, soon after which I um, was moved into the Northern Ireland office, where I've done work of which I'm very proud. Okay. You know, we are soon, and I think particularly under this Labour government, going to have to think extremely carefully about the principles of a free society, about the way the monetary and financial system works, about the sustainability of the welfare state, given the OBR's fiscal sustainability report. You know, we've got 20 years to avoid a massive default on the welfare state if the government actuaries department audit of the National Insurance Fund is right. George should know this. George, to his credit, did do some work on pensions. It was very painful. But the idea that the Labour Party is going to make the long-term fiscal sustainability anything like uh, something we can be optimistic okay. about, the, right. the idea that they'll sort that problem out is a laugh. And, and unfortunately, it will be the poorest and those with no other means of, of, of support who will suffer from this Labour government. Mr Baker, um, I know how it feels. It's really hard to lose your seat. Uh, and I'm sorry, you know... The, 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 the no, I'm it, afraid it's not. Night. No, it's, no I, I, it's I can hard. assure you I've given my wife a very big hug and I am a free man, thank God. Right. But okay. what I'm sad about is the future for our country okay. right. and yeah. I'm sad about those thousand staffers are going to lose their jobs. Okay. okay, thank you very much indeed, Steve Baker. George, mm. just checking the year. Uh, it's 2024, but mm. apparently it's all your fault. Uh, yeah, and well, Ed's. And the 1911 National Insurance Act. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought that was quite a good uh, example of why uh, the Tories have lost tonight, because, you know, we have um, unfortunately lost our way as a party and uh, have all these sort of crackpot theories about why things are going wrong in the country and it's all a left-wing establishment, even though we've been in office for 14 years. And, uh, you know, in the end, what Rishi Sunak should have done, and he is a sensible, sober, good person, in my view, but... You know, he came in after Liz Truss, he came in after Boris Johnson, and he should have been the change from them. He should have taken a big, bold, brave move and said, I'm not Liz Truss on the economics and I'm not Boris Johnson on ethics, and been the change the country wanted. Mm -hmm. But he was too timid about that. He was too worried about managing people like Steve Baker. And as a result, almost immediately it was clear he wasn't going to close the gap after a couple of months of becoming Prime Minister. And so we've been kind of cruising towards this moment yeah, ever since. Um, and, you know, in the end, Keir Starmer did something different, which is he took on Jeremy Corbyn, he took on the demons in his party, the extremists in his party, and, uh, you know, in the end, you know, wouldn't let Corbyn stand as an MP, although, yeah, of course, he's, he's got elected. He's going to... He, he won. He beat yeah. the Labour candidate. I know, but, you know, if, I think, you know, if I... I mean, I'd, uh, you know, defer here to Aisha, but, uh, you know, frankly, getting, you know, trading Corbyn getting elected in one seat for the overall picture that the yeah. Labour Party has changed, that it's not having any truck with this extremism, uh, I think is a trade he would happily have done. And by the way, in his victory speech in uh, at Tate Bodden just now, I thought it was interesting that he was still pressing on the party change message rather than just like, that got me into Downing Street, thank you very much. No. And Liz Truss, who we've just seen lose her seat, does she bear the greatest responsibility? Well, I think, you know, it's so complicated, isn't it? I mean, Brexit is very difficult because the majority of people voted for it. But the promise that Brexit would make the lives of people who felt left behind by globalisation better off turned out not to be true. The promise it would control our borders turned out not to be true. Immigration went up threefold after Brexit. Boris, you know, who had obviously talents, but... You know, his lying ultimately got him kicked out of the House Commons and Partygate was very damaging. And then he had Liz Truss on the economy. So by the time Sunak turns up, it's a very hard election to win. But he doesn't, you know, it, maybe it would have been winnable if he'd been the change then. And in the end, he couldn't be. But I think what, what was hard for Rishi Sunak 
is even his party didn't want him. Remember, he was not elected. Liz Truss beat him. Yeah. So even his party didn't want him. And it's then when he came back in, on the day that he had the most power, and by the way, Keir Starmer will have the most power today, yeah. he brought back Suella Bradman. So right away, he had a chance to kind of, if he was going to be the change, that was the point to do it. I will also just say one thing, George, as well as Brexit and everything, I think austerity ha has uh, played a part in terms mm -hmm. of the hollowing out of so much of the public well, We've got a services. record of the amount of public spending at the moment and record taxes. I mean, public spending has never been higher as a share of our state and taxes have not been higher. Since but... So unless you want them to go even higher, and I don't notice great marches saying, please, can we pay more taxes? In fact, Labour only won by saying, I promise you, we're not going to raise the main taxes you pay. You know, I don't see where this... Ex you know, austerity was a response to the crash, but it is over well, because, well, you say these well, public services want more money. I haven't said that very much so far. Basically, I think you do have to accept that the choices that were made at that time, a lot of the chickens are coming home to roost. You look at the police, for example, which has been really hollowed out. You look at local government, which has been hollowed yeah. out so much. And that's the fabric of our communities. There might be small cuts, but they actually mean yeah, a lot to people. Money? But the problem is, I Where's mean, um, how is Rachel Reeves and Keir Starmer going to put more money in this parliament in the next two years into policing and into local I government not... and into... Ed, I'm not saying that it's going to be easy. But when you and I worked together, we were criticising his cuts mm. together. You, as Shadow Chancellor, were criticising yeah, but the, his cuts. Right. But I do think, you know... At I, the time. The only one right. thing I would say is, look, this is all... Uh, we could have this post-mortem uh, for a long time, and the Tory party certainly will have it for a long time. I think the kind of big question is, what's Labour going to do? And they're going to be hit by some immediate challenges. The Gaza-Israel situation... You know, actually was not that difficult for Rishi Sunak to take a line on that. But for Keir Starmer, with some of the results we've seen tonight, you know, there are big parts of the left up in arms and he's taken a very tough, you know, pro-Israeli line, very similar to Sunak's line. I think that's the first challenge that comes on foreign policy. And then, you know, as Ed was just saying, you know, there's a huge question of, OK, so Labour's made all these promises not to increase taxes, so and they can't borrow more, Liz Truss proved you can't do that. So what, you know, where is the answer beyond just having a Labour Health Secretary or a Labour Education Secretary? What do they actually do? What do they actually do? And how do? do they pay for it? George Osborne, good to have you in the ex-Chancellor's seat this morning. I know, I Thank you it, yeah. very much. Indeed. There were quite a few of us by the end. Uh, <laughs> Ken Clark's coming along soon. Uh, and um, Aisha and Andrew and Kevin, you're all staying with us. Thanks very much. Right. <laughs> Shall we bring you up to date with what is happening? Just a little bit of breaking news. Uh, former Work and Pensions Secretary Mel Stride... Minister for, for Good Morning Britain. Minister for Good Morning Britain, a regular well, on this former programme. former Minister for Good Morning Britain. I think we had him on uh, seven or eight times in the end. He held fact, on you know, to his seat, but by 61 votes. If he I, hadn't done all those appearances with us, you know, he'd never have won it. Uh, it was or GMB, maybe he, he would have got GMB a what won it. You know what was interesting? He did all those interviews down the line from his constituency. Yeah. yeah. He stayed Couldn't campaigning. If he'd, if he'd have left and gone, you know, come to London for those interviews, he might have lost. All those extra doors, people seeing him. Uh, what like, was well, striking, though, was he did all those interviews, yeah. um, seven interviews from his constituency and wins by just a handful of yeah. votes. Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, in charge of the economic strategy, who also wins by a handful of votes was never seen. No, yeah. he was in his constituency the, the whole time. It's paid whole off time. for him, if yeah. not the party. I know, but yeah. Mel Stride, I mean, mm. yeah. in comparison. Uh, 61 votes, that one must be one of the tiniest majorities mm. of the night. But at 7.23, let's bring you up to date with the main headline this morning. Sir Keir Starmer wins a landslide victory in the general election, ending 14 years of Conservative government, Labour, predicted to win 414 seats in total, which would give them a Commons majority of 178. Rishi Sunak called Sir Keir Starmer at four o'clock this morning to congratulate him on his victory. The former Prime Minister Liz Truss, the Defence Secretary Grant Shapps and Commons leader Penny Morden all lost their seats. The Liberal Democrats also beat the Education Secretary Gillian Jill, uh, Keegan. But the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, clung on by just 900 votes.
Meanwhile, Reform UK's leader, Nigel Farage, has finally become an MP at the eighth time of asking, with a majority of more than 8,000. And Reform have four MPs so far. Uh, and Lorda Shaddock has the latest on an historic night for Labour and a disastrous one for the Conservatives.